Why is the rent so high? We often hear real estate agents reciting the mantra, location, location, location. It's true, it costs much more to rent space in Manhattan than it does in a rural area. However, if one listens closely enough, they will also hear the economists chanting, alternatives, alternatives, alternatives. But what do they mean by alternatives? Here's an example. John and Steve are out sailing when a storm blows them off course. Their ship is destroyed and they find themselves marooned on a small island. They soon become hungry. Coconuts are their only viable food source. At first, they both share the best grade of land on the island. Here, they can pick the most coconuts with the least amount of work. After a few days, Steve suddenly proclaims that the best grade of land belongs to him. If John wants to use it, he has to pay Steve rent. Answer this question. John wants the most coconuts possible. He can either work on Steve's land or go to the next best unowned land rent-free. What then will determine the maximum Steve can charge John to use the best grade of land? John's next best alternative will be the deciding factor. The number isn't important, but let's just say John can keep two coconuts rent-free on the next best land. If Steve left John with less than two on the best land, John would promptly go to the next best. Therefore, the rent is determined by the next best alternative. Now, what would happen if Steve claimed all of the second best land as well? Of course, this would mean that Steve would be able to charge John more. Again, this is because John's next best alternative would be worse. What would happen if Steve claimed the entire island? If John is left with no other alternative, Steve can forcibly demand as many coconuts as he wants. If Steve owns all the land, he owns John. If John has more coconuts after working harder, attaining more skill or inventing coconut picking technology, Steve will simply demand more rent. Steve doesn't need to pick any coconuts himself. He simply has to claim land and charge rent. The less land he leaves to John, the more he can charge. The idea that rent is determined by a rent-free alternative is what economists since David Ricardo have called the law of rent. It is among the most fundamental and firmly established principles of economics. There are many factors that cause rent to increase, but all do so through limiting alternatives. Once again, it's all about alternatives, alternatives, alternatives. Historically, landless peasants fled the high rent and poverty in Europe by settling on other continents. The new landlords on these continents were not able to charge as much rent because there was a vast expanse of quality land that frontiersmen could go to rent-free. In the U.S., people could simply go west. Today, there is no rent-free land left on which a person can earn a decent living, resulting in vastly higher rent. Valuable urban land is wasted as derelict buildings, vacant lots, and expanses of blacktop, making it unavailable for housing and jobs, while also creating sprawl. Wasted land means fewer alternatives and thus higher rent. As the productivity of the economy increases, rent also increases. Just as John's rent rose, the more coconuts he was able to pick. So long as people earn higher wages, market rent increases. For the same reason, purchasing prices and mortgage fees for land also increase. Economists group these related costs together and simply refer to them as rent. This problem of high rent is not restricted to the rich industrialized world. Many countries today were founded on the yearning for land, even at the expense of native peoples. Yet in numerous post-colonial nations, vast expanses of fertile land sit idle while many starve. In some of these countries, a few families own nearly all of the land. The high rent in cities pushes poor people far away from vital services like schools and hospitals. Extreme inequality breeds violence and often incites governments towards radical land redistribution policies that destabilize economies, exacerbating poverty. In the U.S., more people are landowners. As a result, there is less poverty. 
Yet this does not change the fact that those who don't own land must pay exorbitant fees to those who do. When land is hoarded and wasted, people will pay whatever it costs, for nobody can survive without land. What other alternative do they have?